produce defective children. Ooh, did I say defective children? Unfortunately, that happens. It's a terrible tragedy. The consequences of very close marriage in a family, consanguineous marriage, is well known to have serious impact on the child's intelligence, health, sanity, and their behavior. We'll get to the behavior in a few minutes. Now, inbreeding is well known in amongst the historians in ancient Egypt. If you're a pseudo-historian, please hang up and don't listen to the show. If you're another one of those idiots who went to Harvard or Yale, who scream at full professors even though you never, you never belonged on campus to begin with and you know it. You were ushered in because of reasons other than your brains. And now that you can't keep up, you're screaming at full professors, telling them that they're racist for wanting you to keep up with everyone else. That's what's going on. Our universities are melting down like Chernobyl under Barry Obama because he wants to destroy every institution. He wants to flatten everything that's good and great about this nation. Everything is melting down in the country, from the police to the universities to the borders to our language to our culture. But I'll get back to that in a minute. Pseudo-historians don't know what's going on, but I do. The most famous example of inbreeding occurred in ancient Egypt. Several pharaonic dynasties literally collapsed after a few hundred years because they were marrying within the family. In order to keep wealth and power within the family, the ancient Egyptian pharaohs often married their own sister or half-sister. And what happened after a handful of generations is well known. The offspring were mentally and physically unfit to rule. Now the same is true about the royal houses of Europe. Take a look at Prince Charles. He's an example of inbreeding. Look at him, look at his ears. Listen to him talk about global warming while his nation has been overrun by Muslims. This moron, all he knows how to do is put on a tie and paint bad watercolors. This idiot. The royal houses of Europe have royal families that for centuries married among each other. Because tradition did not allow them to marry people of non-royal class. Today, thank God, the mental retardation is diminished in the royal families because they can now marry for love, not just for status. Unfortunately, it didn't help Prince Charles. He came along too soon. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. about immigration and then you ask yourself well should anyone be allowed into a country of course what country says anyone is welcome except an insane nation you have to have some sort of selection process don't you or not every sane nation on earth does have a sane immigration policy except this one we used to have a sane immigration policy until that drunk bum from massachusetts that stubble bum drunk kennedy tricked America with the Immigration and Naturalization Act of 1965. And when it was being discussed, that stumble bum drunk had the nerve to say it will not affect the demographics of America. Well, we know what to expect from a drunk psychotic like someone from the Kennedy family. Take a look at America today. Take a look at what it's become from this, from this massive influx. No selection whatsoever. Now, so you start with a selection process for your immigrants. What do you want as an immigrant? Well, you want workers if you have factories and nobody wants to work in them. You need workers. Do we need workers in factories right now? I don't think so. And the factories that are running are almost entirely uh, running on immigrant labor. Americans generally don't work in factories anymore. It's easier to go on welfare. They made it easier for you to go on welfare and get government cheese than to go work in a factory. So they bring in the, the immigrants. Now, what about the health issues? When I, when I, certainly when my father came here, you had to go through a health screening. Remember Ellis Island? E-L-L-I-S, Ellis Island, where all European immigrants passed through. Remember the movie The Godfather, little Corleone? He had a cough, he had TB, they kept him in isolation for a while, three months, whatever. They wouldn't let a sick person into our beautiful country because they were afraid what would happen, Hillary? If a person had TB and you let him into the city of New York with TB, he could spread it amongst the healthy people. So you tended to keep the sick ones out of your city. 
Hillary, Dillary Doc, the mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one, and Trump is a racist. That's all you need to know, you good old Democrat voters. You're so smart. You all went to such good universities. So we're talking about what kind of immigrants we want, healthy, sick, workers, non-workers. I believe we need no immigration for seven years. I say so in government zero, but I'm not talking about that anymore. I'm talking about why is there so much madness amongst third world Muslims? Why is there so much hatred and anger and murder? Why? Where is it coming from? Well, it's coming from teachings. It's coming from inbreeding. In plain English, it's not coming out of the air. A rough estimate shows that close to half of all Muslims in the world are inbred. In Pakistan, 70% of all marriages are between first cousins. In Turkey, the amount is between 25 and 30%. There's also more stillbirths among immigrants. Did you know that? Now, here's a sad fact that you don't know about because it's an embarrassing fact for the um, New World Order flood Europe with immigrants group. Although Pakistanis account for 3% of births in the United Kingdom, they make up 33% of children born with birth defects in the country. Did you know that? It's a very sad uh, fact of reality. And as a result, children with low IQ are far more likely to drop out of school, have limited job skills, limited prospects for employment. And in addition, inbred, inbred people are at a high risk for a wide range of developmental abnormalities. I don't have to spell them out. Inbreeding also results in a significantly higher percentage of of stillbirths, increased risk of schizophrenia, criminal insanity, mental illness, and so forth and so on. It's well known. So what does that have to do with immigration? Well, let's look at it a little bit. Where does this come from? In Britain, 55% of British Pakistanis marry first cousins. Let me repeat the fact. Are you ready, Hillary? Do you have a tape recorder running, Hillary, and all you pro... Aggressives in Britain, B-R-I-T-A-I-N, 5-5%, five, five that's a zero with a slash and a zero, 5-5% five, five of British Pakistanis marry first cousins. And what happens? What happens? Well, high rates of death, low intelligence, mental illnesses, or even mental retardation. And what does that have to do with anything? Well, I don't know. You figure it out. High rate of intermarriage, of in inbreeding. What happens? If many children come from repeat generations of first cousin marriages, what does that produce? It produces a catastrophe amongst the intellect of that people. You have to ask yourself a certain question that's very embarrassing. It's a very tough one. It's a real tough one, Hillary. Very tough question, Hillary. How come there are so few Nobel Prize winners amongst a certain group of people, Hillary? How come, Hillary? Racism? Sexism? You fill in the blank. You and Obama have the playbook. You want to bring them into the country? I think I've made my point. I can go on. There's a lot more evidence, and there's a lot more to be said. But I think you got the picture. If you have generations of inbred parents, and then they marry, and then they have another a child, it, it keeps increasing the risk of negative mental and physical consequences greatly. Now, the good news is the amount of blood-related marriages is much lower among Muslim immigrants living in the West. The kids are smarter here. They don't marry their first cousin in America. They've stopped living like they did 500 years ago. They're educated, so there's hope. However, you don't bring them in from a third world country where they have inbred and produce children who may produce the same thing. That's a very important f uh, fact. Research conducted by the BBC and broadcast to a shocked nation a few years ago 
found that at least 55% of the Muslim community was married, of the Pakistani Muslim community, was married to a first cousin. Now, why does that matter? Because it matters. It matters. Now, why was there, why was there so much emphasis upon first cousin marriages? Social status, keeping wealth within the family, control of the family, and of also, the most important thing is not letting outsiders, meaning non-Muslims, influence the child. Now, I'm going to go to the, what happened in San Bernardino last week, Hillary, when Muslims slaughtered many people with automatic guns at a holiday party. Hillary. Now, what about the little baby that they left with Granny in the in the House of Terror? They left the little infant with Granny, innocent old Muslim Granny. She knew nothing. She didn't know about the pipe bombs. Didn't know about the machine guns. She knew nothing. They live in a one room apartment. The place is loaded with explosives and pipe bombs, machine guns, hate literature, and Granny knew nothing. She was just an innocent rockabye baby. So Granny now has the baby. Social services took the little baby from the killers, who are now dead, and take a guess what's going on. The verminous lawyers, along with the verminous CAIR organization, one of the most dangerous groups in American history, are now lobbying strongly to make sure, listen to this, to show you how unracist they are. Are you ready for this? They're insisting that the baby be adopted by a Muslim family. That's how much they love everyone else. In other words, a good Christian family isn't good enough for them. It has to be a Muslim family because they love Christians and they love America. Now, the fact of the matter is it's very unlikely that that baby's going to be given to anyone within that, that so-called social circle. Because even insane California has standards, I think. And there are very strict rules on whether you can give a baby back to a family that just committed this type of murder. But I don't know. Under Jerry Brown, he may pass some kind of pardon or amnesty and make an exception. We never know. He's busy right now in Paris talking about, no, not the slaughter of innocents by Muslims, but global warming. Warming the Ming Dynasty. Warming Dynasty. All right, so I've made some good points. It's a quarter to the hour, almost. We're talking about immigration, talking about inbreeding. We're talking about immigration and inbreeding. We're talking about why in my day you had to take a blood test and you couldn't marry a first cousin. And what's happened to America since? I, do I have to spell it out, what's happened since? Now, people will say that, look, I own the topic of immigration because my mantra has been, my motto for the show has been Borders Language Culture since 1994. And I'm very proud to tell you, I've been trying to warn you. I've been called the Paul Revere of our time, long before it became a coloring book. We had Paul Revere Society meetings. Many of you remember them. In the heydays of my early days of radio, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, those were some of the greatest days of my life, the early days of radio, when I was a mere local host on KSFO in San Francisco. Because I always knew I'd be a national host. I was blocked by the corporations at that time. And the fact of the matter is I went ahead as though the whole world was listening. It didn't matter whether I was on one station or 300. It didn't matter. What mattered was the message. That's all the same message, by the way, for all these years, based upon rational discussion. And so we had events, Saving Private, the real Private Ryan, one of the greatest events I could ever remember. We had World War II heroes up on the stage that brought the audience to tears. Men in their 80s at that time are probably long dead. You should see those men proudly on stage in their uniforms. The audience was just stunned with, 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 with just respect for these men. Saving the real Private Ryan, then we had Name Him and Shame Him, where I cut out cardboard posters of the worst people in America, including Hillary Clinton, which I'm pretty sure is how I wound up on the being banned in Britain list. I'm pretty sure it's from her operatives, the Nazis who work for her the fascists who go after anyone who says one word about her. Uh, saving Private Ryan, uh, name him and shame him, other, other events. Okay, whatever. Borders, language, culture. So here we are now. Our borders have been destroyed first by Bill Clinton. It started with Bill Clinton. Bill and Hillary Clinton were the first 
presidents, and she was the president as well. He was busy diddling in the back room while she was running the country with Sidney Blumenthal, to the best of my knowledge. Sidney and Hillary. 